It took some time for Robert Schumann to write a piece for piano and orchestra. As a young man, he had written many solo pieces. And after his marriage to Clara Wieck, he completed many leader cycles, song cycles. He wrote chamber music. And so it was 1841 that the very first piece, a fantasy for piano and orchestra, uh, was premiered by Clara, his wife, and conducted by Felix Mendelssohn in Leipzig. The performance must have been quite successful, but the publisher of Schumann wanted a complete piano concerto, not just a single movement. And so in the following years, Schumann wrote an intermezzo and a finale to complete a concerto form. In 1845, we were at the point where we had the complete work as it is now performed as Piano Concerto in A minor, Opus 54. Among all the romantic piano concerti, I would say this is the most lyrical and poetic one. Even though it has many virtuosic uh, elements in it, there's always a strong collaboration necessary between the soloist and the orchestra. And oftentimes, in fact, the piano part is less virtuosic, but more of a nature of an accompanist to whatever the orchestra instruments present. Let me show you a little bit the highlights of the concerti, of the concerto. The, the piece starts with a big bang in the orchestra. And the soloist jumps in with this. So for the soloist, there is no time to settle in. You have to be wound up, walk on stage, and play this fiery cascade of chords right away. And after that, you would expect that the movement would continue with some kind of very energetic, very dramatic uh, theme, but the orchestra presents a very strong contrast, a very lyrical theme. will answer with the same theme an octave higher. So after this first theme, the pianist will accompany the cello. So the pianist plays in the left hand what the cello plays, and the right hand fills in the harmonies. goes on a little while until the soloist sort of uh, reasserts himself. And now accompanies again the orchestra. And then it changes. the orchestra has a big to the and the 
pianist answers. So there is a very lively exchange between orchestra and pianist all the time. And that makes this piece uh, very fascinating. As a second theme in this movement, you're going to hear something that is very much alike uh, to the first theme. at the beginning has the same motive like the opening. In fact, you will find that throughout this movement, this uh, descending third will come many times uh, in, into play. Uh, another lyrical interlude is this part in the piano. say the A part of this uh, movement. Now the orchestra has a big tutti and we come to a place that is even marked with a different tempo. It would say andante espressivo and the pianist introduces that uh, theme like here. <laughs> answer and the pianist will answer and then the pianist accompanies the clarinet and the pianist will then lead so there is a conversation a very poetic conversation between clarinet and pianist. After that, we get back to the original tempo, the Allegro tempo, and it jumps back to what sounds very familiar to the opening three measures. <laughs> I'm just playing here the sections that the pianist plays. So very prominent, uh, very enthusiastic playing. And we have another section coming up that's called marked passionato, very passionate playing. sounds very rapid and it sounds very virtuosic. It's actually based on something very simple. That is what 
I meant before when I said this piece is very symphonic. It's very uh, homophonic in, in its structure and there are so many beautiful harmonies and even though you hear many, many notes uh, to be played by the uh, pianist, it is not empty virtuosity that, it's, uh, that is at this play. Uh, let's skip now to the second movement, the intermezzo. An intermezzo is a in-between piece, by the way, meaning of the word. And it bridges the first and the last movement. And again, it is uh, a very poetic inter interlude. It is a conversation between orchestra and, and pianist again. <laughs> the beginning of that uh, intermezzo. Interesting is how, he, how Schumann, when he finishes this um, intermezzo, he brings back the be beginning of the first um, movement material. And the orchestra will, will play <laughs> pianist so there is this reminiscent uh, theme coming back of as if he goes back to a part in the storyline almost saying to the audience remember how we started something like that. And that turns around to the, I would say, the grand finale, a marathon uh, performance for the, for the pianist as there's hardly any, any break. The theme is like this. <laughs> second um, uh, theme and it goes like this and what is fascinating about that is that the rhythm is changed as you maybe realize when you play the first theme <laughs> basically a waltz. <laughs> but when you have the second theme, <laughs> it sounds to the audience and for those who get confused, it sounds different in its pulse. One, two, three, one, two, three. The pulse has shifted and that makes it sometimes very difficult for pianist and orchestra to, to coordinate. It's one of the famous um, parts in, in the music where the conductor is maybe concerned because the pianist really has no has no problem with that because he plays continuously eighth notes. <laughs> and so forth. But the orchestra members have to watch out for that syncopated rhythm that goes against 
the, the grain a little bit against the natural tendency to feel it in, in a different um, uh, tempo and, and pulse. A wonderful piece that concludes with an A major movement, even though the piece is in A minor. And that goes back, of course, to the time when composers felt you cannot end on a bad note or on a sad note. You have to end with major, a very triumphant, uh, you know, joyful uh, mood, as major stands for, for joy and for uh, peace and so forth. And you cannot uh, end uh, a, a minor piece with a minor chord or something like that. And to elect to write a whole movement um, in major and not turning a minor movement to a major at the very end of its uh, conclusion or the ending of a piece uh, indicates that Schumann was very joyful at the time when he wrote this piece. It is always fun to play that and it's a fantastic uh, piece for both the soloist, the orchestra, and of course the audience. <laughs>